Good morning, guys. Good morning. I'm just going to check. I'm in the right place. Hello, hello. <laughs> Might help if I remember my ear pods. <laughs> Question of the week. Welcome back. It's December. I hope we're all doing well. I had a brilliant question come in and I have to put my hands up and say this question came in from somebody for the ask me anything that I did last week and I missed it. And then I found it again um, this week and asked the lady's permission if I would be able to talk about her question because it was such a good question and I apologize for missing it. So I'm going to read out the question. She wants to stay anonymous, which is, of course, absolutely fine. And here's the question. Hi, Charlie. Could you please talk about sitting with the urges of your habit? Logically, I know that the one way to get rid of habits that are not serving me is to stop acting on them. But I find that incredibly difficult. Why is that? In the moment of an urge, I have so much anxiety and tension. It feels like giving into the urge is a good idea. My mind can be so sneaky and manipulative and de demanding that I absolutely have to do my habit. And because I'm hearing my voice, it feels like it's what I want. But then afterwards, I always regret it. It feels like I have to do something to make the urges go away because when I try to sit with them, they last for so long. And it's as if the habit voice slash addictive voice slash lower brain is always waiting for an opportune moment to get me to act on the habit. How do I stop acting on the urges even when my mind is screaming at me to do it? So thank you for this wonderful uh, and beautifully articulated question and I'm sure that many 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 of you will um, have an experience or an understanding of what this lady's talking about regardless of the thing that your habit is so um, it could be that you're being asked to eat you know a packet of biscuits it could be that you're being asked or demanded to drink alcohol or spend money or um gamble or face pick or like whatever it doesn't doesn't really matter I'm sure that many of you will have an understanding of what it feels like to feel like you're being hijacked and that actually what you're doing when you're collapsing crumbling into doing your habit is you are literally only shutting that voice down so it's very very interesting when I started to learn, like I've been working in addictions um, all of my adult life. So I started being an addiction specialist. I started my addictions training in, at, at the age of about 23, 24, something like that. I have my own experience of addictions and I absolutely understood about, you know, I would teach um the model in the work that I did with the clients that I did within the medical model under psychiatry that you know the cravings will always pass and that's true you know the craving or the urges always do pass and what I never really understood until I came across the three principles is um that like a thought is literally just an energy like a energy emotion emotion it's literally something that kind of co comes across your awareness and then goes out again now the beautiful thing about humans is that they're always doing the best that they can see to do in any moment that they see to do it and what happens is the lower brain which is a machine it doesn't know anything about you it doesn't know that you are um a human being uh, what it wants is for you to survive and what it also needs is for you to protect and conserve energy 
in your brain, in your prefrontal cortex. So that's the frontal part of the brain. So what it does and how it does that is it creates and puts as much of it can into the autonomic system, so the automatic pilot system. And this is quite clever, like you'll you'll have an understanding, an insightful understanding, an embodied understanding of what it's like to, you know, get up, clean your teeth, make a drink in the morning. A lot of that is on automatic pilot. You don't have to think about cleaning your teeth. You don't have to think about um, driving your car often if you've been driving your car a long time. Most people are going through their day on automatic pilot. So if that's happening with pretty much everything in your life, have a think about a habit that, or, or an activity or a behavior, right, that you have done and then you've done it again and then you've done it again and then you've done it again. What ha- what's going to happen is your brain wants to put that on automatic pilot. So it starts to create the thought do the habit. So then we follow that thought because we we are identifying with our thoughts. We think the thoughts are us. So we do the thing. And most of the time in those sort of earlier days of our experience of, let's just say, eating chocolate, we don't have any thinking about it. But it's been created from a place in us that wants us to settle down. Now, the problem is most people eat a chocolate or have a drink of alcohol or whatever it is that they're doing and don't understand that when they've done that, there's been a natural settling down of their heavy thinking. And that's what we all do. If we're always coming from a wise place, if we're always coming from a place in us, that has our best interests at heart, but that is a machine, what does it want for you? It wants you to settle down. It wants you to get out of your head. And so doing a habit, whatever that might be for you, is one way where we settle down naturally. And this may be be happening for many, many years, right? Then all of a sudden, what happens is we get another thought And we think, oh, I shouldn't be doing this thing. So let's use the example of eating chocolate. Oh, I shouldn't be eating chocolate. And now what happens is we start to identify with that thought. So now we're identifying with a thought that that is telling us you're doing something wrong and you don't want to be doing that. And so now we're sitting in judgment over something which was created innocently from a place in us that wanted to take care of us, like a protector part that wanted us to settle down and get out of our head. So what started as something very innocent with a thought that we are paying attention to, which is you shouldn't be doing that. We're now identifying with this thought that I shouldn't be doing it. And so then what happens is it creates the tension that this lady's talking about. So now I've got tension, now I've got judgment, now I've got an identification with a habit that I consider is bad for me and that I don't want to be doing it. So all of a sudden I start to feel hijacked. So on a brain level, if you think about this coming from your lower brain, now the lady who's asked the question obviously knows that this habit is coming from her lower brain. And that's because, as I've said, the lower brain wants everything to be on automatic pilot. So there's neuroscience in here. And you'll have all heard, I think, of neuroplasticity, where you can create new habits. But you create that from a place of understanding. And the understanding is that that thought is not coming from you to do your habit. Whenever you follow the thought, which isn't an instruction, it's just a a thought that's coming into your awareness, probably because your your stress response has been activated and your lower brain creates the thought to get you to do the habit. 
Now, if people are trying to use their willpower, which is what often people do, like, I don't want to eat the thing, right, whatever it is. So they start to create tension because they feel disempowered to their brain. They feel a victim of their thinking. They start to feel powerless. This is important because where else you could ask yourself, where else have you felt powerless? And it's not a question I want you to answer and feel free to um, write on the comment section if you're watching this later. But if there's a familiar feeling of powerlessness, it's going to show up and we're going to consider that that's our normal way of being, that we're powerless to our thoughts and we're powerless to the habit and we can't seem to stop it. So as this lady has said, you know, I always regret it and I, I feel like I have to do something to make the urges go away. What you've got to understand is that you are in the driver's seat. So the way I've used this analogy, and I think I heard this from someone called George Bransky, who's, um, you know, you can look him up. He is um, a psychologist. The way he describes it is you're driving a car sitting at a set of traffic lights you're the driver you've got somebody in the back seat you've stopped at some traffic lights and they're red the person in the back seat starts going run the red light run the red light and you're like what the of course I'm not going to run the red light (laughs) are you mad (laughs) And he keeps going, run the red light, run the red light. And of course, through your mind, your brain starts to sort of process what's going on. And you're thinking, maybe I could run the red light. And so you start to then have a little conversation with yourself. Maybe I should run the red light. No, 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 no. I'm not going to run the red light. He's, he's, He's completely nuts. And so you don't run the red light because you are the one in control of the car. You're the one driving you feel like you've got this backseat driver in your head screaming at you to do your habit. And whenever you do the habit, that voice goes. And I remember what that was like. I remember what that was like to feel that this tension got created because I've got something screaming at me to do whatever it was I was doing. And if you if you know anything about my story, I have done everything. I've had pretty much every habit that you can possibly have. And I would get this chronic physical sensation, this physical tension until I did the thing. And then that would abate, that would settle. And then I'd have judgment on it and and round and round and round would go. What I never realized is that firstly, my brain was creating the thought to get me to do the thing, which is what was creating the tension because my wisdom didn't want to do that. My wiser self didn't want to do it, but I also sat in so much judgment over myself. It That is what became my habit. You can't do it. You'll never beat this. Nothing will work for you. You're fucked. You're broken. You're always going to be like this. And I'd sort of go from seeking so many ways to try and stop doing the things that I wanted to do, which included studying every single modality um even going to india and i came across this understanding in 2017 called the three principles what i saw about that mixed with neuroscience and a brilliant book called brain over binge by katherine henson is that the 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 neurological junk that was coming from my brain was not coming from me i was misidentifying with those thoughts that i thought were telling me that I needed to act out on a certain behavior when I didn't need to, and you don't need to, and the thought isn't coming from you. It's moving through you, but it's neurologically wired to do so. And because you've always um, followed it as if it were an instruction, and maybe later on there's been some um, battle, some inner battle about that, but essentially... There's a belief that you can't do it. There's a belief that you are powerless to your brain. There's a belief that you're not good enough. 
there's a belief that you aren't as powerful as your brain. And this is really interesting because we start to identify with certain character flaws. You know, I have an eating disorder or I have anxiety or I have depression. And, you know, I am depressed or I am anxious or I am struggling with my eating. Like whatever you are identifying with, you you say it and express it as it's as if it's part of you and it isn't part of you be aware of how you articulate this how you are identifying with something which is moving through you may experience anxiety but you're not anxious you experience anxiety and it's not 100% of the time this lady that's written to me, you may have urges and they are very sneaky and manipulative. Yes, that's why I call them the shitty committee or the little fucker, because they, they, your conditioning, your little fucker knows absolutely everything about you, knows exactly how to get you to stay the same and will draw you in like a spider web, right? And you get caught into this loop of being horrible to yourself, being horrible to yourself, doing the habit, trying to fight it first, doing the habit, and then being horrible to yourself, horrible to yourself, horrible to yourself, and round and round and round you go because being horrible to yourself is part of your habit and you are identifying with these parts of your personality that aren't even who you are. This is something that you do because you've never known that these thoughts aren't coming from you. They're coming through you. You weren't born with this habit. None of you were born with anxiety. None of you were born with depression. None of you were born struggling to not hear the biscuits calling you. And as adults, we judge so harshly ourselves and others really you know we we always judge from the level of consciousness that we are looking out from and the easier way is just to understand that you aren't your habit you're the space underneath that you are the space in which the thoughts arise but they aren't who you are So I go into real depth about this in my um, She Finds Freedom program. Um, I also talk about this in my first Love Yourself program, which is the uh, £33 one. Um, the eight-week one is, is much more in depth. Um, I can link to those in the notes underneath. But what I want you to take from this is that when you make it that there's something wrong with you, that there's something you need to fix, you're coming from that angle, from that perspective, and there's nothing to fix. There's an experience that you're having in a moment that you're misidentifying with and making it into a problem and then becoming consumed by that and not seeing the thread of how you got there in the first place. And what you actually need to settle down is to give yourself some care, some love, some understanding, maybe get some support, have someone who's got your back. And treat yourself with unconditional positive regard. And I don't think many people really understand what that means you know, to treat yourself with love, to treat yourself with kindness. You know, unconditional love is love without judgment. It's not love with, you know, judgment most of the time. It's literally love without judgment, unconditional love, love without conditions. You experience a habit that you have some judgment over, it creates tension in your being 
and then you collapse into the known because then you get to beat yourself up. Now, this isn't conscious. That's the habit. Then you get to be right. And you're not right. And that's what I want you to know. Um, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to come back uh, today at two o'clock. Um, and I'm going to be doing the first of a few live coaching demos. If you want coaching with me and you don't mind it going live in my group, then get in touch and let me know what you'd like coaching on. It will, it's free. The catch is that you don't mind it being live in the in my free Facebook community. Um, but yeah, great question to this lovely lady. And it's one of my favorite topics, which is why I did a whole program around it. And obviously we talk about this and much more in my circle group as well. So there's lots of resources, free resources, though, in my freedom group loads in the guide section if you haven't looked at those have a look at those because there's loads of these videos and there's loads on my podcast and there's loads on my youtube channel but if you have a question you specifically want me to answer for my question of the week write to me and let me know goodbye for now and i will speak i'll see you later at two if you can join me if not i'll talk to you very soon i hope lots of love